Right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, graphing exponential functions. Uh, we had a worksheet last Friday that uh, where you explored how to graph an exponential, although you didn't know it as an exponential. Uh, we had two uh, ideas. We had uh, f of x or y equals 2 to the x, and we had uh, y equals 1 half to the x power. These are the two graphs that we, that we produced uh, when we did y equals 2 to the x. This was our x, y uh, table here on the side. Uh, the, we got our points, and these are our graphs. Okay, for the one half to the x, it looks like basically the same thing, just flipped over. Um, both of these are called exponential graphs, um, and we're going to take a look at y here now. Uh, let's take a look at what the definition of an exponential graph is. We're going to go into the actual uh, the notes of of this section. <clears throat> an exponential function, by definition, is any equation that says y equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. Now this B value, this B stands for the word base, okay? This base number has to have two rules. It has to be greater than zero. In other words, it has to be positive, but it can't be one, okay? Those are the two rules. The other rule is that your X has to be in the exponent. Wherever your variable is, has to be an exponent. If you have this situation, then you're going to have an exponential graph. Now you have two types of exponential curves. You have what's called a growth function, and you have what's called a decay function. As you can take a look on the right here, on the left, on this exponential, on this exponential uh, growth function, as you can see, as x grows, y grows. Okay, and that's why we call it growth. On the right side, in the decay one, you can see as x grows, y actually gets smaller. In other words, decays. All right. Well, how can you tell from an equation whether something's a growth function or a decay function? Well, we look at the base of the exponential. If the base is the number more than 1, then we say it's a growth function. If your base is between 0 and 1, we say it's a decay function. Now, why can't it be 0 or negative? Well, because we defined our base to be a number. The base has to be positive other than 1. So it can't be 0, it can't be negative. Okay. So going back there to the problems that we, we did for uh, the weekend, if you take a look at this, so this is why this problem right here is a growth, is because our base is more than one. Whereas in this one, it's a decay because our base is less than one. In other words, it's actually say between zero and one. So let's go back into what we're just now talking about. Um, if you look at this, this graph, uh, at these notes again, right? The first thing is just say whether the, the, the function is a growth function or a decay function. Well, I want to focus just on the base. Three-fourths. Is that more than one or less than one? That's right. Less than one. So this is a decay function. Okay. In B, anyone? Anyone? So what would you say? Growth or decay? Growth. Growth. This is going to be a growth function. And what about the last one? You think it's a growth. But it's, I'm going to say it's a decay. And the reason why it's a decay, folks, you see how that 4 to that negative x? What do you think that negative is telling me to do to the 4? That actually becomes 1 fourth, right? That becomes a 1 fourth. So this is a decay. If I graph these out, in general, this graph I know will look like this. That's what a decay graph looks like. This graph will look like this. And this graph, again, will look like this, OK? So growth curves should always look like a plane taking off. Whereas a decay graph should always look like a plane landing, okay? That's from west to east, of course. All right, now something else we talked about in this class is the fact that in the, uh, in the homework, we said that the y value in, the, in both of these graphs, it looks like the y value is getting closer and closer to zero without touching it, right? Well, those y values have a name, okay? That y value that your graph is approaching has a name, and it is called a horizontal asymptote. And a horizontal asymptote, by definition, is an imaginary horizontal line representing the y values that the graph is approaching. Okay? Now, in the, again, in the homework that we were talking about before, if I have y equals 2 to the x, the horizontal asymptote should be 0. Because this guy right here is going to get closer and closer to 0. That is a y value, but it'll never touch it. And again, for this one as well, it'll be 0. We said that for the other homework, the other two problems, that the horizontal asymptote, well, the y values, well, that's going to be 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. 
So the horizontal asymptote for this guy would just be a 1. Whereas for this guy, this becomes a 0. And 0 plus 1, the horizontal asymptote, in other words, the y value should again be approaching 1. Okay? So that's what a horizontal asymptote is. All right. So the horizontal asymptote is always the, an imaginary horizontal line, right? Now, if you have an equation like y equals a times b to the x minus h plus k right here, this k value will always tell you what your horizontal asymptote is, okay? So in general, we can say that the horizontal asymptote is always just y equals whatever k is. So the first thing I want to do when I graph an exponential function is I always want to graph my horizontal asymptote. Now, we're going to go, this is the easiest way to actually get points on the graph. I'm going to plug numbers in for x and figure out what y is. Well, I want to be lazy here. Since I'm dealing with exponents, I want to pick values for x, which makes my overall exponent a negative 1, a 0, and a 1. Then that's easy math to do in my head, or hopefully it's going to be easy math to do in my head. Okay? After I graph my horizontal asymptote, I graph these three points out, and I connect them with a smooth curve that approaches the asymptote. Okay? Now, again, if you look at the if you look at the original equation, uh, this equation right here, let's talk about the domain of the of these functions. Would you agree that the only domain restrictions that we've talked about are x is in a radical and x is in an even radical, I should say, and x in a uh, denominator of a fraction? Because this x is in an exponent, it's in neither of those cases. There are no domain restrictions on this graph, so the domain is all real numbers: negative infinity, positive infinity. There's going to be a natural range restriction because we know that, again, your y values, your y values be, will, will be approaching whatever your horizontal asymptote is. And since we said the horizontal asymptote is k, your range will either be from k to infinity or negative infinity to k, but not including k. Because we said you can't actually reach it. Because actually what you're going to do is you're actually adding a little bit more than zero to whatever that last k value is. All right? So let's take a look at it as an example here. Uh, in this problem, it says state uh, whether each function is a growth or a decay curve, graph e each function, and then draw the horizontal asymptote, state the domain and range, and the y-intercept, then state the transformations. So I've got y equals 3 times 2 to the x plus 1. Okay, well again, the horizontal asymptote is just going to be the equation y equals 1. Again, if you think about it, again, this first term that's going to approach, it's going to get closer and closer to zero. And zero plus one is one, so my y values are approaching one. Does that make sense? So I'm going to graph this as a horizontal line at y equals one. So I come in, and there's my, uh, there's my uh, horizontal asymptote at y equals one. So I graph him. Um, did I say whether it was a growth function or a decay function? Okay. This is, is this a growth or a decay? Growth. That's a growth. So I know in my mind it should be looking like a plane taking off, like this, something like that. Okay? All right. Now I actually have to graph this, this out. So again, I want to plug values for x, which make my overall exponent a negative 1, a 0, and a 1. So I plug in negative 1, 0, and 1 for x. I actually do the math now. I go y equals 3 times 2 to the negative 1 power plus 1. So that's y equals 3 times a half plus 1, so y equals 3 halves plus 1. Well, that's 1 and a half plus another 1, so 2 and a half. So when x is negative 1, y is 2 and a half. Now let's plug in 0. 0, I think, is going to be a little bit easier to do. Uh, when I plug in 0 in, 2 to the 0 power is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 plus 1 is 4. So when x is 0, y is 4. And then lastly, when I plug a 1 in, does everyone see how I get a 7? OK, great. So I just graph these out. I graph negative 1, comma 2 and a half. About right here. 0, comma 4, about right there. And 1, comma 7 is right there. I graph these. I like to say we hug our asymptote. We come in, get really close to it, and then we plane take off, there it is, bam. And that's my exponential curve uh, growth function there. All right, the y-intercept, as you can tell, is just 0, 4. And the transformations, the 
transformations on this are just going to be well let's see here I think there's a shift let's see there's a shift uh, up one and then there's a vertical stretch of three okay notice that the two this two is not a transformation it's only a b H and K. There's no H in this, and there's the K value right there. Okay. That'd be great. And that's uh, that's the first graph. Uh, the domain of this guy should be all real numbers. I'm just going to write it right here. And the range. Well, again, it looks like the graph goes to the lowest value. It's, it's approaching one, but it doesn't actually hit it, and it goes up to infinity. So that's my range. Okay. Let's do it one more time. So let's take a look at this. If I take a look at another equation, let's maybe do one where we have a, a decay. All right. So in this graph, I've got uh, y equals 2 times 1 third to the x minus 2. This is a decay because this is less than 1. All right. The horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 2 from here. Again, I'm going to graph that in my graph. There's my horizontal asymptote. Again, I should be imagining a plane landing on here, something like that, okay? All right, let's plug in some numbers for x. Let's plug in negative 1, 0, 1 again. If I do that, plug in a negative 1. 1 third to the negative 1 becomes 3. And 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So when x is negative 1, y is 4. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 All right. Hey, guys. Hey, listen. Oh, you, you're watching the rest of the screencast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, plug it into the zero for x. Uh, we get uh, zero. One third of zero is one. One times two is two. Two minus two is zero. And then plug it into one. I would get two times one third is two thirds. Minus two is negative one and one third. Okay. Uh, graphing these points out, I'm going to get negative one comma four. 0 comma 0, and 1 comma negative 1 and 1 third, so like right there. Connect them with a smooth curve, knock them in like this, and there's my graph. And then you can see it's a decay graph. All right? The y-intercept, as you can see, is 0 comma 0. And the transformations will be shifting down to...